delve into the geometric interpretation of the singular value decomposition just a little bit more. Here I've written A as its singular value decomposition. We're interested in looking how A times X results in a new vector Y. We're doing this in general from CM into CN. But the pictures here capture it for when we go from R2 to R2. Okay. Now what's going on here? Well, if we look at Y is equal to A times X, that now becomes U times sigma times V Hermitian transpose times X. And we can first look at this and say, hmm, that we saw is a change of orthonormal basis. This really just gives us the coefficients when we view X in terms of the orthonormal basis that is given by the columns of matrix V. So we go from here to here, where all we do is do a change of orthonormal basis. Then we want to take that and create this, and that we're going to call y hat. Hmm, what happens there? This picture here can be interpreted in two different ways. One way in which you can interpret it is you take your x hat, you transform it by scaling the individual coefficients to create your new vector y hat, or you can say, hmm, the unit ball here is transformed into this stretched unit ball here, where this here represents sigma 0 and this sigma 1. And then whatever linear combination of v0 and v1 you take here in order to get x hat is the linear combination of sigma 0 times u0 and sigma 1 times u1 that you have to take in order to create y hat. Okay, so now this here gives us the coefficients for our final result, but with respect to the orthonormal basis that you find as the columns of matrix U. So, to now express it in terms of the orthonormal basis that consists of the standard basis vectors, all we need to do is U times Y hat, because that takes the appropriate linear combination of the columns of U and we get our final result, vector y.